Hello, hello, everyone. This is another episode of todebate.eu, the debating podcast. I'm Sebastian, one of your co-hosts, and I have Dirk, who is now all ready after having debated with me for an hour and a half on our previous motion. Uh, as you may or may not know, we record this not live. This is the only way you can actually listen to it and download our episodes. You can actually download them in case you're not aware as an MP3, and you can distribute it. Uh, it's free on social media, on whatever distribution distribution channel you wish to use. But you know that's not really new, is it? Oh, now that's my cue to jump in. I was wondering if you start uh, getting into. Uh, deeper depth of uh, your pre-argument as i like to call it so I, i'm not going to pick on you Doug, because english is not a native language but de deeper depth is kind of uh, repetitive is it is it <laughs> but is, uh, <laughs> yeah so you completely killed my train of thought but anyway what was the train of thought <laughs> come on express yourself i express myself This is this is a I, free I, society. This is a free podcast. In fact, I would say podcasting is the only remaining free medium. What do you think, Doug? Now you're <laughs> quoting me to myself. I'm I would say I don't know. Has I would anyone say heard you're you say that ever? I would say you're damn right about this, Sebastian. So <laughs> the reason the reason why, we, why I say this is that we just before this recording session we had a, a written email interaction uh, myself and Dirk about podcasting and advertising and podcasting and and how it's still a very much of a decentralized process as opposed to the other types of media out there and it's actually quite connected to the topic we're going to debate on today which is i'll leave the floor to you facebook is a news youtube is a new tv spotify the new radio we keep reinventing the wheel so it so comes to the motion for today Yeah, it comes down to the, the observation that all those very new innovative ways to do things on the internet turn out to build clusters that resemble the systems we know from before. That's mm -hmm. the core idea. And the flip of the coin decided that you're going to be for that motion and yes. you're going second, which makes me fighting that motion by being against and going first. I like how uh, every time we say, it's probably not proper English, but we say the flip of the coin decided as if it's some kind of god or entity has forced us to do this. <laughs> and we just comply with a, with a coin. Yeah, by, by the flip of the coin, we decided, <laughs> right? By the great flip of the coin. All right, you get started. You got your two minutes. Convince me that Facebook and YouTube and Spotify are such incredible innovations <laughs> no pressure a oh. few minutes okay let's do this Dirk goes first and argues against the motion where is the breaking news you see on facebook actually from sebastian that's my starting point exactly the breaking news on facebook is from a news outlet and not coming from Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg actually does everything in his power to make this point clear that Facebook is not a news publisher. Facebook is a company that tries to connect people through means of social media. Next up, YouTube, Netflix, HBO, Amazon, Vimeo, Instagram. Never has there been such a plurality of channels in such variety of content types. Can you produce your own Saturday night TV show on TV? No, you can't. Can you on YouTube? Sure you can. So I would say it's a completely different beast. It's not just a new TV. Maybe we use it in places where we used to watch TV in the past, but it's a different kind of interaction. So in a nutshell, please let's not confuse evolution with reinvention. Uh, we are evolving. Our services keep some elements clearly, and those are the elements you will point out in your argument. So there are not entirely reinventions. There are known elements from before, but they add interaction, they add free access, they add personalization, and they allow for mixed channels in unprecedented ways. So it's something completely new. And you made a very excellent example of this. Podcasting. 
Some people liken podcasting to radio, say it's just another form of radio. Maybe that's true because it's audio, but radio has been a mass media apparatus with big companies in the middle distributing to everybody else, and you had no way to answer and you no, had no way to do that yourself. In podcasting, you can, so it's a different thing. Thank you very much. Next up, Sebastian. Let's hear his argument. It's funny how we talk about innovation, but the only thing that's happened in the media arena is mixing old media with the internet. There was substantially no gain except in quantity. Now, dare I say, the quality has not improved as a, as a result. Hello, fake news. Hello, cat videos. Initially, we thought, indeed, you're right, that the internet would allow for more diversity. But actually, what we notice increasingly, increasingly, it's not going the other way around, is that there is an increasingly fewer number of channels, for instance, on YouTube, which, is, which get an increasing share of the views. Most of, it's only a very few number of channels which get 90% of the views. Our listeners, it's funny you bring this up because I also had prepared this argument, but in different light. Our listeners are the smart, uh, smart ones out there. And if we had not had a podcast, we'd basically be launching our own radio. No difference. And I would not be surprised, by the way, if you, like me, keep listening to NPR or France Inter, the well-known public radio in France, equivalent of NPR, or keep reading old media today, even if you read it via a screen, like the New York Times or The Guardian. By the way, you probably keep watching the same high-quality shows that are produced by the big media companies or the studios which have money, not by the independent producer which has no means to produce anything. The distribution channels may have evolved, but in essence, it's all the same. News, TV, radio. I would even give you an analogy. If you look at the invention of TV, having images on the screen, that was a big innovation. right? Maybe going from black and white to color was not a big step up. But going from one screen to another, no big difference. What's true innovation in comparison, you may ask? Well, I'll give you a couple of examples. Solving cancer with machine learning analysis of thermographic imagery. That's true innovation of trying to solve cancer. Another example, going to the planet Mars and coming back. That would be a groundbreaking innovation. So overall, no, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, they're just reinventing things that existed in the past, just mixing it with the internet. And now on to Dirk. Let's hear his rebuttal. I like how you say, no, it's just old media mixed with the internet. Sebastian, please see the forest for the trees. So the internet, this is the new thing. This is like the massive innovation that you seem to miss. To explain what that actually causes, I, I tried to point it out earlier. TV. It's companies using billions of dollars to produce content and distribute it to millions and sometimes hundreds of millions of people, but local people mostly. Radio. Big companies servicing a massive infrastructure for the sole purpose to send information to a local audience. News in general. Massive companies collecting information around the globe but emphasizing and translating it for the local needs and sending it to local subscribers. What's missing in all of these pictures? The back channel? The agency? So it's always a big company in the middle that does things. And with very few exceptions, the ability to receive it globally. Now, in comes the internet. You add internet to TV, what do you get? Well, TV with a Twitter stream maybe on the side, that's pretty boring. But that's being done. Don't get me wrong. But if you, if you look at companies like Netflix or companies like YouTube, they do something else entirely. All of a sudden, you can be your own station. And be that as it may, that there are a few channels that attract the most listeners and watchers. But the fact of the matter is, you cannot have your own TV show, but you can have your own YouTube show without any problem, and there are plenty of examples where newcomers just make it to the top of the attention span and the attention economy in no time. This is completely new and unheard of. 
it created a whole range of new formats. The kind of video stream and TV stream that you see today is nowhere similar to what we used to see in TV. So this whole area was a big innovation. Uh, it's a global citizen and listener sh and watchership instead of a hyper-local audience. And that is true for all these channels as well. All these things are completely new. That was not there before. And for that reason, I say, no, it's way more than just reinventing the wheel. If anything, then we accelerated it beyond belief. But I would argue that the internet added a whole new dimension, which is individualism and interactivity between every participant in the network. Now it's Sebastian's turn. You make very interesting arguments. And before I counter them, uh, I'd like to make one more point. If we look at the major tech revolutions in the past 20 years, they're basically can be summed up in two ways, biotechnology and IT, information technology. It's not media or transportation or education. Sure enough, the IT revolution transforms all industries, but it's a transformation, not a radical change. We still listen to music. In fact, music apps would even use the same terminology, channels, stations. Likewise, if I remember correctly, YouTube's initial logo was a red rectangle that was symbolizing the TV screen. And Facebook talks about a feed of news, the news feed. So all the language is very much similar. Everything you said is actually very uh, interesting in terms of argument. I claim that everything you're describing is actually an illusion. And I'm going to take and try to tear apart the various arguments as to why I think it's an illusion. One illusion is that nobody can live off, off the internet by having their independent channel. And that's why we're coming back to the fundamentals, which are quality content, which unfortunately or fortunately can only be produced by professionals or by people who have the means to produce that quality content. So yes, fair enough, Internet, the internet allowed for an increased distribution of all this content. But if you look at something like Netflix, which you also mentioned, I actually, I'm not a subscriber of Netflix for one simple reason. It does not have the quality content that I would have sought in a DVD store back then. I used to rent DVDs at my local uh, library uh, because it had this niche independent movies and Netflix does not have this, right? So fair enough, it's very popular, but it's very mainstream media that you'd have found anyway in your local uh, library or DVD store. That's how, by the way, Netflix started. It actually only shifted to the internet because the distribution channel allowed that and people had more bandwidth to download and stream content. So it made no difference to its business. Actually, that, I didn't realize this, but it's actually interesting to see that it's the same business in operation. Yes, you can own your, your own YouTube show. And as you were saying that, I was thinking, the thing is, it's not professional. And even I, who try to actually have a, some kind of semi-professional content on YouTube, nobody watches it. And this is the trend that is increasing. Nobody watches the stuff you produce. Yes, you can have it, but it's no different to using your camcorder in your garage 10 or 20 or 30 years ago and recording this and putting this on tape and sharing it with your friends and your parents and your family you will get exactly the same number of views, 10, 20, 30. I am not joking. This is what I'm observing myself with my videography from drone footage, which is honestly not that bad when you compare it to other videos out there. Not professional, but not complete amateur either. So that's why it's an illusion. Netflix is an illusion of diversification of content, of quality of content. Having your own YouTube show is an illusion of thinking, well, oh, it's all new. No, you can actually do the same thing. It will not have much more visibility than you even had before so i'd like it to be the case Dirk. don't be don't get me wrong i'd like this to be the case but it's not in reality and it's going the wrong way in terms of surfacing independent amateur content final statements Dirk goes first i beg to differ it's not the same as having your camcorder in your garage I know examples of people that wouldn't have had a chance or a job in traditional broadcasting industries that have hundreds of thousands of listeners or watchers in the current media system. So you have a shot at this. Maybe your channel, maybe my channel does not attract the kind of listenership, the kind of uh, watchers that you describe. Fair enough. But you have a chance, you can participate in the same platform. And there are plenty of examples of people 
making it to the top through those systems. Also, the professionality. Look at Twitch. Look at the formats you see there. It's not near as highly produced as you would expect from a TV station, for instance, spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Yet there are people living off those channels. There are people that live as citizen journalists with their own private media outlets out there that wouldn't have had a job without the internet, without what we introduced as channels. So your perspective, be it as it may, Netflix is here to stay and you say, rightly so, is a different thing than your typical DVD renting outlet. But that's the whole point of my argument. It is indeed a different thing and it adds to the channels, not just replacing them. Sebastian. Yes, it is true. Some people can live off of these new or so-called new apps, but they're very few. And the changes uh, that have happened over the last few years, thanks to the internet, I contend, I claim they're actually a smaller transformation than what we think they actually represent. The real revolutions are things like I've mentioned using machine learning, which may sound very obscure to many listeners, or things maybe more more tangible that is going to happen in the next few decades or years about going to the planet Mars. So I think we, we want to put things in perspective and show where we have incremental changes, small stepping stones towards, let's say in this case, what we're talking about, increasing the distribution channels. You slap the internet on top of old media, you get what you see today, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, what have you as opposed to radical transformation like going from no TV to having a TV, from no radio in your living room to a radio. I think these were a profound transformation in society, and less so when you're just switching screens or having five or six or ten screens in your house in your pocket now. So overall, I don't think we're changing or doing anything new. We're just reinventing the same thing. So what do you really think? I, I, I was not comfortable defending my position initially, but then, as always, I, uh, I tried to come up with my own arguments and now I don't know what, I, what to think anymore. I actually really believe in my arguments. I actually do think it's not that drastic a change. Now, 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 that, now that I come, come, come to analyze it and realize it, I'm disappointed. I thought it was a bigger transformation than it was. And then I analyze it and I realize, hang on, Hang on, like, like <laughs> you're just doing confidential stuff which nobody cares about, and you have this illusion of being on a worldwide platform. So fair enough to debate is globally known across the galaxy, and great. I mean, we have millions of listeners. That it's true would not have happened before. But my crappy drone videography channel, like nobody cares about it. <laughs> Yeah, the interesting thing is that, that that was too a debating motion that I suggested, right? <clears throat> and I would have picked for me. Um, I would have picked for me the stance that you defended. Um, so I, 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 my inclination was, it is not the same. Um, it is basically converging to patterns of behavior we had in the past. Let's frame it that way. And I th- do think okay. that's true. In the end, people are... Most people don't want to have the choice they can have. So I, I watch my kids closely how they consume media. They consume a lot of video of Instagram and YouTube. And actually, they follow through the recommendation stream. So you you start playing and then the next video plays, the next video plays, the next video plays. The maximum thing they do is they swipe if it's not catching their attention in the beginning. It's like sapping on the TV, right? So they, they watch a stream of media that has been selected for them. For me, that's just like TV. It doesn't matter if it's personalized to you because that's part of the, the one of the few revolutionary things in there is that it's your stream and your stream is unlike my stream but uh, hey who cares in the end you do the same thing you just take in what somebody else selected for you and and it, and and it goes back to our debate about filter bubbles right yes. like this recommendation just serving your own biases so in the end, is it better or worse? I I can't really tell. Like you could you could actually con- claim that it, it is actually worse because you're just feeding, you're yeah, just yeah. being fed the same thing. Whereas if you're on the TV, well, you have to switch on the TV. You have to choose a channel. Yeah, right? the, the, like there are in two, the old days. So the, I 
to, to finish what, what I was trying to say, there are two things. Sorry. So first off, I got that impression. So that was my in inclination that I said, basically, you consume it like TV. You read like news. Um, you, you just all the revolutionary things that I pointed to being able to interact and being a sender yourself, all these things um, seem not to be of relevance to the majority of people out there. So in the end, maybe that is all there, but uh, it feels like people are just watching TV, listening to the radio and reading the newspaper. Um, what is still there though, that element that we are now truly global. And that's something that um, people start realizing because it becomes a problem for companies like Netflix and so on and YouTube for that matter, that in the end, my kids expect that they can access the same videos as somebody in the US and they and it, it swaps over to them and they expect that they can comment and interact on it and have a control over the feedback given to that. That is unique, that's different. So same but different in a sense. And the third one is really that uh, because I, I keep saying podcasting is the only free medium that's left on the internet, which is because it's decentralized and everybody can participate. But we are we have a history of throwing away chances like this, right? So uh, it is, as I said, same but different. So to me, it feels like, unfortunately, we are doing the same things with those media that we used to do for the past decades. And it's, as to your point, it's worse because... Uh, those platforms are designed to keep you on the platform. So uh, I, I do think my kids are watching more Instagram and YouTube and have a better time maybe arguably over this than I used to have on TV. Because I at some point grew frustrated of sapping on TV and then I would turn to doing something else and that probably would be reading a book or something. <laughs> um, now we are glued to these media channels because they are so well adjusted to us. They present us with what we want to have. Um, and that's worse, I would I say. Am I am I wrong to assume that your you like like I continue to use uh, the traditional media even though you're probably reading it on the on the internet? I'm yeah I I'm subscribed to a traditional newspaper and I read it on my tablet because I wanna I wanna spend my money on financing uh, a group of professional journalists who are not incentivized to just feed me what I want to hear, but are incentivized to feed me something they came up with. That's my rationale behind that. But yeah. No, I'm, I'm like you. Um, but I think there is still, there is certainly room for innovation in that space. I think there, there are ways to do great stuff with media. Uh, like I, I'm truly am disappointed with Netflix. I did look into it. It's not a joke. I, I'm a huge cinema buff, but I have to admit, I actually download vi films illegally because I have no video on demand platform in Switzerland, which allows me to view videos in English, for instance, or in original language, still not in Switzerland in 2018. Yeah. So I, what choice do I have? I have no other choice. Yeah, I have that, to find like illegal content, copyrighted content, because otherwise I cannot see the film. And because I've been raised in this culture in the night and the, the end of the nineties where it was just easier to download an MP3. No, it was serious than to, to go, just try and buy the, in the store where online, which none exist or what did not have all the MP3s yeah. or the quality. Well, it was DRM protected back then. Uh, it was it was just more, it was more easy. But I am disappointed. I thought Netflix was when I heard about it. I thought, oh, great! Like, fine, it's a bit expensive, but it's cheaper than a, a cinema ticket, at least in in France or Germany or the UK. And it's totally worth it. And then I look at the catalog of films. It's so disappointing. Yeah, you're looking for the wrong things in Netflix. Netflix is not about the films. Netflix is about uh, the, the series. So it's TV like a, series, the right? TV shows. Yeah. And they are yeah. very high production value. But uh, I, I, I'm with you, um, especially since you're in Switzerland. I'm not sure, not every one of our listeners will realize this. But uh, it's the same true, by the way. It was the same for Germany until maybe two or three years ago, I was forced to VPN into the US to receive the, the, the current running shows that I paid for. I subscribed to it. I paid for it in dollars in the US, but I had to VPN into a US system. I had to set up my own VPN server because at some point they started cracking down on on uh, 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 rent uh, VPN services. Russia, and I, Russia again. Yeah, that's that's all Russian meddling is that. So I was forced to basically uh, um, bend the law 
uh, I paid for it, but I, I, I downloaded everything. You don't access it. Yeah, yeah because yeah. I it was geofenced. And yep. now I'm in Germany, so Germany often is in the front line of those third world countries that get access to the juicy stuff. But Switzerland, which is kind of next to, to Germany, if I cross a border into Switzerland, a whole range of media is all of a sudden out of range. And this, the yep. same is true the other way around. Um, uh, an anecdote I had, there is a podcast documentary Uh, called The Messengers that has been done a couple of years ago in the US. They released it on iTunes. And I wanted to watch this documentation, uh, documentary. Um, in order to do that, I'm, I'm, I, because they released it only on, on the US market, I had to physically be in the US, create a account on iTunes with a US address, And find a payment uh, provider that's signaled as being in the US. Or I found a trick where you can basically defer the payment, uh, adding a payment provider and then add uh, voucher codes that have to be purchased in the US to your account to buy that freaking documentary. So in the end, I watched it on my last trip to the US. But uh, the, this documentary, which is talked about online, is out of range anywhere else. And it... In, in in former times, this would be uh, have been perfect and normal and would have gone unnoticed, right? So we, we knew that movies start in the US first and a couple of months later, they will come to cinemas in, in Europe. And nowadays, it just drives me the, uh, up the wall if I cannot access it. We are in the global internet. I'm willing to pay for it, for heaven's sake. Why is it not accessible? We do... Uh, We, we the, divert in another irony, debate here. <laughs> no, the irony of what you're saying is that, or the or the sad thing is that, unless you're aware or familiar with using what you describe as VPNs or having you know US addresses, uh, and it's only a small fraction of people who can do this, uh, the vast majority of the people are not aware or they don't know how to do this. So it actually makes it, it makes it makes even less democratic the access to culture or to media. Um, which is a shame because of this premise that the internet has in its essence to globalize and democratize information and makes it indeed more accessible and and it's not that simple and maybe not the case at least not today it, it probably will be at some point i hope and there's so many things we can certainly improve on but yeah not I, convinced today is the, go ahead i personally think we had peak peak freedom like Roughly 10 years ago, it's uh, it's been it's been fairly democratic and top-notch functionalities about 10 years ago, and it goes down since then. Because uh, with uh, with uh, bring, um, basically clustering all the distribution power into very few companies that then are bound by their local jurisdiction through um, the, 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 the trends we see of countries locking down their virtual borders, if you will, through services that are not all of a sudden not available everywhere anymore uh, because some countries also fear that uh, they, they are flooded with content they don't want to have. All these trends and legislation that forces central control. Like for instance, in Europe, we just released, uh, we just got new legislation for enforcing content control. So you basically need to some form of upload filter as soon as you have something like a social media that uh, channel that you, that you provide. All these things kind of kill that idea of a truly decentralized global community. So we will, we will land somewhere in the middle, I, I hope. But in the end, This is like the potential, right? So if you think of it, um, the, the, the systems we created are really new. Unfortunately, we come back to our old habits and how we use them. There's probably something very human in there, how we, how we fall back on our, our feet and tend to consume things around us. Um. I'm not boring you, are you? Am I? No, I feel no, like I'm, I'm talking more. That it's, <laughs> I'm just thinking that it's good that we have we're forcing ourselves to debate and to and to randomly assign sides because I think we're very similar yeah. in most topics. So <laughs> it makes it quite interesting to see how we are 
we have to to fight for every every side. But then in our discussion, very often we tend to fall back on the same. I we're close, more closely aligned. Every time I talk to you, I feel that we're we're much more aligned than I thought we. I didn't have than I thought we were. Not that I thought we were not aligned, but but I I realize that we're much closer in terms of thinking process. That's very true. Um... I'm very happy about that. It would probably be much more frustrating if that wouldn't be the case. Imagine imagine we start off with our randomly assigned sites in the debate and then we are at each other's throat in the post debate. <laughs> well, sometimes it's more passionate, like the previous one on Russia and China. I couldn't believe it's that. More <laughs> All right, I'll let you get back to your uh, work because you have Russia in your scope for the supplies. <laughs> yes. I was what wondering the, what was the conflict of interest. Um, we we need to uh, when, when you say I have Russia in my scope for our listeners, that means that I have uh, in my job a geography that to take care of that includes how Russia. How well you perform in Russia? Yeah, yeah. I do things in Russia, and I work for an American company. Ooh. So who am I spying for? That is the important question. <laughs> It could, it could be double, triple agent. Who knows? I'm a quadruple agent sometimes. Quadruple? Like, who's, what was the fourth entity? I'm flipping back and forth. Like, multi-layered oh, okay. reality. Like <laughs> Just flipping. Yeah. I'm, every morning I flip the coin and decide on Is what side I'm on. Is that a Trump reference? We have not talked about Trump a lot today. Is that a Trump reference when he talks about people flipping? <laughs> to, you know? <laughs> Uh, next motion. By the way, it's funny how, how Americans don't know how to pronounce German names because I was thinking the other day, you know, like, uh, so Müller are fine. They know how to pronounce it roughly. But uh, for Har Harvey Weinstein, they say Weinstein. Like, what the heck? Like, they, if you had pronounced Harvey Weinstein, yeah. like, it would have it would send up a red flag, right? Weinstein as opposed to Weinstein. But I can no? give you one more. They don't even know how to pronounce their own names. Uh, what, what I found really, really funny was when there was the debate about Judge Gorsuch. Do you remember? They, yep. they kept calling him Gorsuch. And I, I, had, I heard an interview with the guy where the interviewer asked him, how is your name pronounced? He said, it's Gorsuch. And, and everyone, the BBC, Fox News, what have you, and everybody else around the globe, obviously, as well, because clearly, if the Americans pronounce it Gorsuch, that's the right name, right? So if they don't pronounce their own names right, how are they supposed to, uh, to pronounce our names? And we Germans, we just inflicted another one of these on you. So um, the, the, the leading party in Germany, um, the CDU, just elected their new party leader, and the name is Annegret Kramp-Karrenbauer, yeah. which which is it is just even it, it's even for german standards incredibly hard to pronounce so there are fun fun collections of people trying to pronounce that name and i ever since i keep my i keep my fingers crossed please 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 make her the next chancellor of germany so the whole world has to say annegret kram karrenbauer whenever they try to be <laughs> professional about the name <laughs> It's AKK or maybe AK, AK-47, all of that's Russian, theoretically. <laughs> yeah, right? whatever. Again. Again, coming back. And so where are we with Trump? Oh. I don't know. Trump was the topic. Trump, the segue. Trump has disappeared from our debates lately. He's like, pff, boring. It's always the same, right? Yeah, we have to bring him in artificially now. Uh, maybe we really should stop uh, with this debate. <laughs> it's late. It's 10 p.m. here. And I'll let you get back to your work. Thanks again. Thanks, Thanks again. again to our, thank you to our listeners. Thank you to you for listening, being our loyal listeners. Uh, feel free to spread the word. Uh, we're always keen to have more listeners. Why not? After all, it's a free podcast. There's no advertising. We don't make money out of this. So you have all the incentives in the world to actually promote this podcast, which tries to enlighten you on a different range of topics. So thank you again for listening. You can vote on todebate.eu, our website. You can also comment directly on the website you go to the specific episode and you can add your comments directly there and that's it stay tuned for our next episode next week thank you again thank you bye-bye